Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking another look at Google Bard. I got an email from them the other day saying that Bard now supports the ability to assist with programming. If you're not familiar, we've done a video on Bard before where I compared it to like ChatGPT and I also compared it to like Bing's chat solution. Uh, and honestly, I'm kind of over the Bing chat solution just because Microsoft is doing their anti-competitive nonsense again. So today we're going to be boycotting them and just taking a look at Bard and ChatGPT. Now, of course, Microsoft funds ChatGPT, but we're going to set that aside because I need some point of comparison and my sarcasm can only take me so far. But uh, what we're going to be trying is a very simple breadcrumb uh, snippet. Now, previously, when I tried to do any sort of coding assisted uh, stuff with Bard, uh, the way it would work, it was give you back a couple lines of code. They wouldn't really be coherent. They wouldn't really make sense in the context of the other lines it generated. It was just kind of not really usable. In comparison, of course, ChatGPT, it's the same thing it's going to be using like uh, for Copilot, so it's going to be a lot more powerful. Uh, but, you know, we're here to make sure that Google's uh, at least improving. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be as good as the competition in the first iteration. That's fine. I'd just at least like to see something that is close to usable today. So in order to do this, I have prepared a prompt, which is a pretty simple one. It's just asking it to use Ruby on Rails and give an example of creating a breadcrumb subheader that uses yields and content for us to change the breadcrumb. So this is pretty simple. Uh, it's not necessarily the most correct way of asking this, but that's intentional just because I want to see like what it's like in an actual uh, scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and give it this prompt. I'll come over to chat GPT. I'll switch to GPT-4 and I'll give it the exact same prompt and we'll see uh, which one gets closer. We can come over here. The uh, Bard one's already done. It's going to run a lot faster than GPT-4 because GPT-4 runs like a turtle. Uh, we can come over here and take a look at what it has for us. So it looks okay. Uh, on first glance, we have a, a yield for the breadcrumb and we come down here and we have content for the breadcrumb. So that seems fine. So we'll take that and we'll just go ahead and give it a shot. I'll say Rails new video and then I'll, oops, I'll CD into it. Hopefully I still have that in here. I do. Okay, cool. And while this is running, we'll see that GPT-4 is going to give us something similar to that solution. It's just going to take its sweet time getting there. So that's one area where you're probably going to like Bard a little bit more. It's a lot more similar to uh, the GPT-3.5 in terms of speed there. But okay, in order to test this, it looks like Bard wants us to have a couple pages. It looks like an about, a contact, and a home page. So we'll do a Rails G controller pages. We'll give it a home and about and a contact. Go ahead and run that. We can then come over to our config and our routes.rb because we need to change each of these uh, to just be home, about, oops, and contact like that. And then after that, we have to do a comma because we have to tell it which controller action to go to for each of these. And we'll use GitHub Copilot to autocomplete this. That seems fine. And now let's set a root to be the pages controller and the home action. So that takes care of that. Now we have to come over to our uh, our actual application layout. So let's do that. Come over here to app views and layouts and application.html.erb. And it wants this stuff in the body. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it in and take a look. Uh, so the first thing we have is a header. That seems fine. We have a main, which is good, and a footer. Uh, now this is interesting. I don't even remember mentioning a copyright, but that's fine. Uh, I do like that it actually creates a header, a main, and a footer. That's very nice. Uh, but uh, if we look right here, we can see we have a section class for the breadcrumb where we yield for a breadcrumb, and then we have a regular yield tag. So we can go ahead and try this. Uh, to try this, it's going to give us another page, hopefully. So here it's our about page. It doesn't tell us where in the about page to put it. But that's fine. Let's come over to our pages and our about, and we'll come above the pages about. We'll paste this in. And then we uh, don't have one for the contact. So I'll say, can you give me a breadcrumb for the contact page two? And I'll leave that typo in just to uh, see what it comes up with. Maybe it corrects it, maybe it doesn't. Uh, and we can check in on GPT. It looks like it's finally done and it's using home and posts. So that's gonna be a whole other thing. Uh, so here we go, we have a contact page. That's working. Let's come over to our pages and our contact page and paste this above everything else and save it. Let's now come over to uh, a Rails S in the terminal and come over to localhost port 3000 and check it out. We have a home, a about, and a contact. Those are our links, of course. We can come over to the about page and now we can see we have these breadcrumbs here. Now I think 
Bard said that this would give me something similar to this, but I'm not really seeing that in terms of uh, what it actually looks like. So it's being a bit generous here with what it'll look like because it's actually just doing a LI. That said, uh, it does look like it's not entirely correct. So in this case, we'd have to get rid of the contact us portion here. Uh, and if we come over to the about page, it looks like in the about page, it's not a link, it's just a active, so we'll say this and we'll change this to contact like that. And that should, yeah, it looks good enough to me. So we don't have a breadcrumb here, but on the about and the contact pages we do. So that seems more than reasonable, totally fine with me. Now let's take a look at what ChatGPT came up with. Uh, so in this case, it says you can use a content for, that seems fine, it wants a shared partial. So let's go ahead and do that. Come over to our views, right click new file or new folder. We'll call this shared. Then we'll come into the shared. We'll right click new file underscore breadcrumb.html.erb. Paste this in and save it. We can now come into the uh, application layout and it wants us to render that breadcrumb. So let's do that. Come into app layout and we'll render this breadcrumb. Uh, I guess we can just, uh, just comment this out for now. So we'll comment out this section like that. Uh, and then hopefully this will uh, hopefully work. Uh, if I do this, there we go. So now let's put this one in. We'll render this and then we'll come down here to the show page and it says you can, let me zoom out. You can use content for to set the breadcrumb links. Uh, so in the post show page, let me go do that real quick. Uh, and we'll do a rails. I probably should specify what pages to use. Rails G scaffold post title body of type text like that. And then we can run a rails DB colon migrate. And then we can run a Rails S to start our server. There we go. Uh, it says we can do the shared breadcrumb in the body again, and then in the show page, we can use a content for to set it. So let's come into app, views, posts, and show. App, views, posts, and show. We'll do this above the post partial. So home, posts, and that. That seems fine. Uh, do they have one for the posts index page? It doesn't look like they do. So that's uh, something to consider, but let's come over here. Let's go over to posts. Let's create a new post, say test and case, create it. And now we can see here that on the post page, we have the content for the breadcrumb links. And that's going over to here, which is in our breadcrumb partial, which is over here. Uh, so we're yielding for the breadcrumb links. That makes sense. Uh, my only complaint here is it seems like we have uh, a, a repetition here where it's doing a link to posts and then it's just doing a regular post. It'd be nicer if this was something like uh, at post.title maybe, something like that. Uh, that seems a bit more reasonable because that's how your breadcrumb would normally be laid out, except instead of an LI, it would just be like angle, angle brackets everywhere. Uh, but this seems fine to me. Now, both of these solutions, uh, you'll probably notice, are going to require a fair bit of um, manual labor, <laughs> to put it lightly. Uh, it's going to make you have to sort of change these based on every page that you're on, which is fine. It, it doesn't scale well, but it, it's a good enough solution. Now, in terms of what each solution offers, um, they're both kind of not good. I honestly thought the GPT one would be better because I've tried this before and I think it got a lot closer the last time. Uh, that said, I do like how Bard is breaking up the sections here. This is a lot nicer than what I'm used to when I get stuff generated for me. Uh, so I definitely think Bard's moving in the right direction. This is this is definitely a usable example that you can tweak a bit. Uh, GPT, I don't know what's going on with its CSS lately where I can't really look at this right. Uh, I don't know why it looks so weird. Um, but uh, I think I think it's still probably winning. It's definitely still a little bit more usable, but I do like the progress that I'm seeing over here. That said, as I mentioned, it's a fair bit of manual labor. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go over to Google. And the first result was this one. Uh, and basically what we get here is an actual usable solution. This is gonna scale really well. It's gonna give you a helper method. You're gonna use it similar to the other solutions, but it's effectively going to allow you to just create some breadcrumbs that are uh, automatically generated based on where you are. It happens in the like the controller as opposed to in the views. It's a lot cleaner uh, in my opinion. I'm not gonna go through and, and you know do this of course. There's a blog post you can follow along with if you'd like to. But yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found it helpful. I don't know if this was helpful. It wasn't really meant to be helpful, more entertaining. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.